Falcons, the new quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, he believes the 49ers are still the team to beat this year. Here's what he had to say about that. I couldn't be happier about where we landed and where we are and, and what we have to look forward to. But this, this, everybody's kind of looking up at the Niners right now in the NFC. So if we're going to go anywhere, we got to get through this guy and his and his group. So uh, the Falcons, obviously, a very interesting team due to the signing of Cousins and all the good players they already. Had. Yes, I know. That's your team. I get it. So are they the biggest threat to the Niners? You must think that they're the biggest threat to the Niners in the NFC. No. Oh, okay. If you've seen the movie Friday, I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Uh, just because I like what this football team showed us last year, also the culture that Brad Holmes and, and also Dan, uh, excuse me, Dan Campbell has been able to build in Detroit. When I look at this football team, they made a point to cheer up the defense, right? They brought in DJ Reader, Reader Marcus Davenport, also traded for Carlton Davis, which was a massive need in the secondary. I can't wait to see what they're going to be able to do during the 2024 NFL draft because they really hit on 2023. Mike, who's your biggest threat to the Niners in the NFC? Guys, it's the Green Bay Packers. They were unbelievable. Last nine games, 7-2. and two. Jordan Love was playing as good as anybody in the league. They'll draft a left tackle. They added Josh Jacobs. They got three great young receivers, maybe more. I think Jaden Reed's going to be a star. They got two quality tight ends. They got a lot of young players on defense. And if you just watch the games, they blew out Dallas and Dallas, and they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the 49ers. So... I love the trajectory of Jordan Love, who's maybe one of the five best young quarterbacks in the game today. And uh, I, I, I'd be really surprised if they didn't draft a left tackle, which is really their only hole. Nick, do you agree with either of these picks? Lions, Packers, biggest threats to the Niners in the NFC. Yeah, those are great picks, but I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. I think what we saw from them last year was an issue with creativity on the offense, and I think bringing in Kellen Moore will help them address that. They certainly didn't have any offensive uh, talent shortcomings, and on defense, they've started to address some of their issues with linebackers and safeties, and I think with three picks in the first two rounds coming up in this draft, they'll address the rest of those issues. And It's a team that's been there before with a quarterback that's proven that he's capable of doing it. If this offense starts to um, evolve a little bit, as I think it will under Kellen Moore, I think that this team will be back at the top of the heap in the NFC. Well, we know, we know somebody besides the Cowboys has to win the NFC East, so that's as good to pick as any. I think the Lions yeah. are probably the best answer here, but I did want to make a point. I think that the Los Angeles Rams are a team that the Niners are going to have to contend with in their own division before they get to any of these other teams. Remember, the Rams just made the playoffs in their rebuilding year, the year where they took all the dead money on the cap uh, and, and, decided to, uh, and decided to try and rebuild. So now they have a first-round pick for the first time in eight years uh, that they'll probably make. Uh, and I think they're a team that's on the rise and probably going to be a factor quicker than people think. What about Aaron Donald retire? Aren't you concerned about that? Aaron Donald's a very good player. It'd be tough to replace. Yes, I, I would think that's going to be a problem. But it's not like they had nothing else on defense last year. Yeah. They got a lot of good young players on that Like team. Kobe Turner, also Byron Young. Those guys really stepped up. But being able to hit on Kyron Williams and also Puka Nakua, what it tells me is that Les Snead understands what, he, what he's doing. I was with him in Atlanta before he became a GM mm -hmm. with the Rams. But... Les Snead has really been hitting on his draft picks, and that's what you want to do. If you want to be yeah. able to contend, you got to hit on your draft picks, and they got to play an integral role on your team, offensively and defensively. And Davis White, too. Tredavious White, pretty good signing for them, too. Veteran corner there uh, who's done a lot in the league, so we'll see if he's healthy enough to help them. And looming NFL contract questions out there. That means it's time to play a game we call Pay or Delay, where our analysts decide whether the guy should get paid or whether the team should wait. Uh, pay or Delay, it rhymes. Harry, let's start with you. Pay or delay on Justin Jefferson? The Vikings better pay him. You talk about his first three years, no one did what he did in NFL history. Over 4,800 yards, 25 touchdowns. Last year, he only played 10 games, had over 1,000 yards and five touchdowns. You better pay that man. Harry says pay the wide receiver. Neek, pay or delay C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, I feel like the players are going to fall on one side of this and management is going to fall on the other side of this. You can predict <laughs> what I'm going to say. When you have a good player, pay him what he deserves. C.D. Lamb has proven himself to be a number one receiver. Why are we not paying people what they deserve? Get that man his money as soon as you can. It'll be better for you. It'll be better for him. It'll be better for everyone in the long run. C.D. Lamb, one of several Cowboys entering the final year of his contract. Uh, if he doesn't get an extension, another is quarterback Dak Prescott. Mike Tannenbaum, pay or delay? Not to let down my friend Neek, we're going to delay. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's got a $55 million cap number. I would have done something sooner. He's your franchise quarterback. 
But now that you're at this point, you might as well let it play out and see where you are next year. And maybe you have alternatives, but um, I'm really surprised it's gotten to this point. But since you're so close to the end, if you're Dallas, get through the season and you have a really good idea of where the market is. So far, delay has been uh, the choice the Cowboys have made. Uh, and that has caused a lot of speculation. Uh, our Adam Schefter actually addressed possible situation the Cowboys should consider when it comes to the future of Dak Prescott, the quarterback position, and this year's draft. Here's what Adam had to say earlier this week. What are they going to do at quarterback if they lose Dak? That's interesting. And that's why I think the Dallas Cowboys might just be a sleeper team in the quarterback market during the draft. Because at some point in time, they might have to draft a quarterback higher than you'd think. Because Dak is going into the last year of the contract. And it might be time to get somebody in there to start grooming him. Just like they found Dak Prescott in round four. Might be time to go find another quarterback in another round to begin to get him ready. Crazy talk, right, Mike? Not at all. Oh. Not at all. Really? Yeah. Look, Dak's going to graduate. He's going to have a robust market, justifiably so. If I am Dallas, I have to be prepared for him to go, and I have to look at the draft. And just for context, guys, they're picking 24, so we have a graphic on this. So roughly, it's about $3.3 million in terms of what the salary cap would be. And right now, that's Dak's cap number this year. But if you go to next year, and let's say his extension is somewhere between 55 to $60 million a year, what I would say to you guys, I'd rather have Dak Prescott over, let's say, Michael Penix. But is he $52 million a year better than Michael Penix, knowing that we have C.D. Lamb, knowing that we have Micah Parsons, amongst others? And I think when teams trade back up into the first round at the bottom, like what we saw Baltimore do with Lamar Jackson a couple of years ago, they're looking at the salary cap ramifications. That's why I think someone like Michael Penix will go somewhere in the 20s. Not saying it's necessarily Dallas, but if I'm Dallas, I need an alternative because Dak could graduate next year. Neek, my, my answer to Mike saying, is he $52 million better than Michael Penix is maybe, right? Like that's possible. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, if he's the difference in you being a contender and not being a contender. You don't know exactly what you have in Michael Penix or any other quarterback that might be around at that point. You do know what you have in Dak Prescott. Maybe it's just me being risk averse, but I don't think this is a ridiculous idea. I mean, planning for any potential externality is a good thing. If they have a feeling, and I'm sure they have a relationship with Dak Prescott, they have a feeling that he wants out and he's not going to sign a contract and force himself to free agency, then by all means, start to prepare for the next phase. But if not, then I don't really see the point. If you want to keep him, then the point in drafting a quarterback is and hoping that something works out is fine, but it'll be a real uncomfortable situation for a third or fifth round quarterback to walk into where we're all thinking that this is the heir apparent to Dak Prescott. If they, I mean, that is if they don't draft someone in the first round, which then is obvious. You draft a quarterback in the first round, then he will be your starter in the coming seasons. Yeah. Yeah, I just think they have more team needs than to focus on the quarterback in the first round right now. When I look at this team, not having that running back that they want, they lost two offensive linemen. Tyra Smith went to the Jets. Uh, Tyler Biotis at the center position. He went to the Washington Commanders. So I feel like there are more needs. They can get more defensive pieces, more defensive line. Their first three round picks should be guys that, they're a that are able to help their football team in 2024. What, they don't have a fourth round draft pick, Mike. And the reason why they don't have that is because they use that pick to draft, to go get Trey Lance from the San Francisco 49ers. So your developmental quarterback is already on your roster. I'm not picking a quarterback in the third round or the fifth round. I'm just not doing that if I'm Dallas. But Harry, if you're the GM of the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott knocks on your door next March and says, thanks for everything, I'm leaving. Now all your eggs are in Trey Lance's basket, who's young, talented, but very unproven. Yeah, look. Well, I, so, so would be any rookie that you draft. Right. Any rookie that you draft will be unproven as well. Mike, it's not just Trey Lance. Any guy that you draft in the draft from, from the quarterback position as a rookie, it's not guaranteed they're going to make it. It's not. Trey Lance, 23 years old and has $5.3 million in guaranteed salary coming this year. I think he's probably going to be on the roster. They'll give him another year um, to see what he's got. Uh, and the Cowboys, yeah, in the first, first round. We've been killing the Cowboys for not signing anybody in <laughs> free agency. Now you want them to use a first round pick on a quarterback. It will be good though for us. It will be wonderful for us if the Cowboys <laughs> took a quarterback in a first <laughs> round. <laughs>